Hey fellow lab rats, this is Rebecca from the Lab Rat YouTube channel. In this video, I'm going to be demoing the ABO blood typing procedure, so both the front type and the back type uh, that we use in blood bank all the time. Alrighty, let's get started. Okay, so today I'm going to be demoing an ABO blood type. So I'm doing both the forward or front type and also the reverse or the back type. So to do this, I need a couple of different things. So the first thing is actually a properly labeled patient specimen. So this is actually from a phlebotomy student of mine, um, and we've labeled the sample lab rat. How convenient. So for blood typing, uh, you can use uh, purple tops or uh, uh, pink tops. Um, either is, is fine. So this one is properly centrifuged, so the plasma is up here on the top and the red blood cells are down here on the bottom, and of course it's properly labeled. Um, I also need the patient's red blood cell suspension. So we're shooting for about a 3% or so uh, red cell suspension. Um, I have already made it uh, from this patient's sample, and of course you can see I have labeled it with the patient's identification, lab rat, and then I personally label my red cell suspension with our BCs. Um, so please check out my video on how to create this suspension. Um, and it's, it's used, these suspensions are used for basically every blood bank test that you do. Um, so it is important for you to know how to do this. So please check out that video. I'll link it in uh, the below. Um, so I have my patient's uh, properly labeled red cell suspension. Um, I also need um, labeled tubes. So each one of these tubes in permanent marker, I've labeled with the patient's identification and also what uh, reagent agent I'm going to be putting in here. So this one is labeled lab rat and anti-A. This one is labeled lab rat anti-B. All right, the next one is lab rat and anti-D. And then, so these are all my forward typing or uh, my front typing part of the ABO type. Um, and I typically leave a space in between these tubes, the, the forward typing and the reverse typing. So in the reverse typing here, I have, again, patient identifiers and then A1 cells. And then this last one here is lab rat and it says B cells on it. So even if you're working with one patient, even if you're in the blood bank and there's just one patient happening, you always want to label all of these tubes with the, the correct patient first and last name. Um, so you, it would not be acceptable just to write anti-A on this, right? It, it, you have to have the first and last name. So please don't make that mistake. So in addition, um, off to the right here, I have some disposable uh, clean pipettes, transfer pipettes. Um, and then I also have blood bank saline. So we use blood bank saline in the blood bank. Uh, we cannot use uh, water um, and water lyses the red blood cells. So this is why we only use blood bank approved saline. So I have this in a little squirt bottle. And then also we need some reagents. So for the ABO front and back type, uh, we need a couple. So anti-A, anti-B, anti-D. So these are going to be for my front typing, so my forward typing. And then we have A1 cells. Um, so notice that these are red blood cells. Um, and so we want to have these properly mixed so that all the red blood cells are off the bottom of this vial. So we want to do that every single time we do one of these types. So A1, which is the first uh, tube of the back type, and then B cell. So again, these are red blood cells with known B antigen on them. So we need to make sure that the red cells are off at the bottom. Okay, so we have that, and then we also have our patient sample. So the first thing that you're gonna do for this is, in the first tube here, which is labeled anti-A, you guessed it, we're gonna put anti-A in there. So we're gonna put one drop of anti-A. We're gonna close the vial and put it back in our blood bank rack. And then anti-B tube, we're going to put one drop of the anti-B reagent into that anti-B tube and put it back in the rack. And then I'm gonna take my anti-D reagent and I'm gonna put one drop in the anti-D test tube. All right. Now, I kind of like, a, I follow this rule, is that I always put the clear reagent or patient specimen into the tubes first, all right? So you can do whatever you'd like. This is just what I personally do. So I'm gonna take my patient specimen, 
take the top off and I'm going to add for my back type. I put two drops, one, two, one, two. So two drops of the patient plasma in each of these tubes because we're testing the patient plasma against known uh, reagent uh, red cells. Um, so off screen, I'm going to dispose of this into a biohazard container and put the tube cap back on it, okay? So all my clear fluids are in first. All right, so now it's time to put in your red blood cells. So for the front type or the forward typing, you're testing antisera reagent with your patient red cell suspension because we're testing whether or not there are antigens, specific antigens present on the patient's red cells. So I'm going to take, again, lab rat, RBC suspension, my 3% suspension, mix it up a little bit more, and I'm going to put one drop of that patient red blood cell suspension in those first three tubes. So we're mixing anti-A antibody, so with uh, red cells, and then the patient's red cells. Anti-B reagent with the patient's red blood cells, and then anti-D reagent with the patient's red blood cells. Now, and these two, so that's the front type. The back type is A cells and B cells. So these are red blood cells um, that have known antigen on them, and we're testing the patient's plasma. So we're gonna put in the first tube of the back type, so A1, in the patient's tube that says A1 cells on it. Put it back in the rack. And then B reagent into the B cell tube, right? So this is, these forward type, uh, forward type reactions are testing uh, what antigens are present on the red blood cell, the ABO antigens, and this back type is testing what ABO antibodies are present in the patient's uh, plasma. So I give them just a slight little bit of shake, mix them up just a little bit, and then what I'm going to do here is off to my right I have a blood bank centrifuge. I'm going to centrifuge these tubes for 15 seconds, and then once I'm done with that I will come back to you. Okay, so we're back. I just centrifuged those patient sample tubes in the centrifuge for 15 seconds, and I've put them in order, the same order that they were in in this rack. So what I'm going to do first, this is my result sheet, is I'm going to put the patient's name, so lab rat, and the date. I actually don't know what today's date is. Uh, oh, it's December 5th. Wow. <laughs> December 5th, 2022. Alrighty. So I have my result sheet here and we want to do these one at a time. So I'm going to take anti-A tube and I'm going to, hopefully I can show you this. I am going to slowly and gently rotate this tube, shake this tube a little bit. Hopefully you can see it. Now, when I'm looking at this reaction, I'm looking at the mirror. I am not looking actually at the tube. And this is a very distinct negative result. There's no agglutination in there between the patient's red cells and the antisera. So this would be a zero result for anti-A. Now, one mistake that a lot of people do is they go and grab the next tube immediately. Why is that incorrect? It's incorrect because we haven't labeled or we haven't resulted this yet. So we want to do these one at a time. So for this particular patient, anti-A is going to be zero. Okay, now we can move on to the next tube, anti-B. Let's try it again. It's going to be the same thing. So I want to fully get that button off of there. You can see my phone recording this. Hey, phone. All right, so it very clearly, that button, that red cell button came off. There's no agglutination whatsoever. This is a very distinct and clear negative result. So we're going to write negative for this patient. All right, now let's check out the anti-D. So anti-D, oh, I can tell this one's positive. All right, look at that. So you see how clumpy that is right there? There's just one big clump. 
It's a very characteristic and normal four plus reaction. So normally uh, antibodies in the um, ABO blood group react pretty positively. Um, so they're pretty strong. So for the anti-D result, I'm gonna put four plus there. Now, it looks like this patient is probably gonna be an O patient, right? Because both anti-A and anti-B didn't react. So this means that this person does not have an A antigen present on their red cell and also does not have a B antigen present on the red cell. So what should we get in the back type? These should probably be four pluses, right? Because we're pretty sure that this person is going to be an O patient. All right, so let's look at our back type. A1 cells, oh yeah, this one's gonna be positive. All right, so shake it off a little bit. One big clump there, it's a little bit of a clump. I actually, honestly, would probably call that a three. There's a little bit of clumps in there. So this is gonna be a three plus in my A1 cells. All right, let's look at our last one, B cells. Oh, that's a beautiful four plus reaction. You see that big clump of red cells right there? Just one big clump. That's a very characteristic four plus reaction in tube. Excellent. All right, so we've got expected results here. So four plus and the B. So I have no A or B antigen. I'm RH positive and my back type is positive. So three plus in the A1 cells and four plus in the B cells. So what this means is there's no A or B antigen present. There's an RH positive status. And then this means that we detected both anti-A antibodies and both, uh, I'm sorry, both anti-A antibodies and B antibodies. So this is a perfect O positive patient. So we're going to result out O positive for this patient, right? So this is very uh, characteristic of an old patient. This is what you should get results. Alrighty, hopefully this helped you. Um, if you like this video, please like it and subscribe to my channel for more laboratory educational content. And as always, if you have any questions um, or if you would like to like me to talk about a different topic or perform another test for you on this channel, please leave it below in the comments. I'd be happy to help. Alrighty, until next time.